that's the good news. That... Ja, und schon wartet der nächste Vortragende. Das ist Herr Professor Nicola Scafetta. Er ist Professor für Ozeanografie und Atmosphären. Physik in Neapel, an der Universität Neapel. Studiert hat er in Pisa und promoviert in Texas und er forscht zum Klimawandel, den Veränderungen in der Atmosphäre und den Ozeanen, dem Zusammenhang zwischen Sonnenaktivität und dem Klima sowie anderen geophysischen Phänomenen. Sein Arbeitsgebiet erstreckt sich auch auf theoretische und angewandte Statistik und nonlineare Modelle komplexer Prozesse. Herr Professor Scafetta veröffentlicht regelmäßig begutachtete Fachveröffentlichungen in einer Reihe von Fachgebieten wie Astronomie, Biologie, Klimatologie, Physik und Soziologie. Ja, wir freuen uns auf Ihren Vortrag. Okay, thank you for, for the invitation. So I would like to talk to you about this topic, so the, about the urban heat island and the bias in the climate network using a, a methodology that can be developed. Okay, so this is this one. So practically I use uh, the minimum and the maximum temperature uh, records. So let us a uh, little bit introduce the problem here. Uh, first of all, uh, you know about this, right? So this is what uh, 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 it is told to us. Uh, this is the IPCC last report, SR 1.5. So essentially, the claim here is that uh, uh, we need to avoid a, that the temperature rises at this level, that is 1.5 degree above the pre-industrial level, because if we don't do that, if uh, the, the warming will exceed this uh, number, then uh, there will be troubles, uh, okay, a lot of troubles, okay, so we need to avoid these things. And these are the kind of troubles that, uh, that uh, may happen if, uh, if, uh, if the temperature continue to rise, right? So, and uh, okay, so let us start. So this is what, what uh, people would like to do. They would like to reduce the emission of CO2 so that the temperature will uh, remain below this uh, 1.5 degree of warming. And uh, okay, so this is uh, if the target is two degree of warming from the uh, uh, pre-industrial time, yet uh, this is what uh, the countries uh, will likely do. Okay, so one, so this is what uh, uh, people need to do to reach the target, but this is what the, the, the countries uh, will do. So how can we get this? So I don't know. In any case, uh, this is uh, uh, what uh, is, is happening right now in the world. These circles are the number of uh, uh, cool uh, plant, uh, uh, of coal plant that are being built, that are being built right now in the world. As you see in Europe and the United States, there is uh, practically nothing but to see what is happening here. So there are around 1,000 Uh, uh, coal plants that are being built right now in uh, China, India, Indonesia, also Korea, uh, Japan, and so on. So there is uh, something strange. So uh, I don't know how we can get uh, the target uh, if uh, so many coal plants are being built here. So, okay, so um, in any case, uh, We need to discuss uh, uh, these two records here. So we have uh, the temperature record. This is a global surface temperature record. And these are the climate models that are used to interpret the data, okay? So when we have uh, these two records, there are two questions that uh, uh, people should ask. The first question is, uh, Is the 0.9 Celsius global surface warming since the pre-industrial time reliable or not? So we have seen that there is this 0.9 warming 
uh, since uh, uh, this period, this uh, pre-industrial period, and then there has been this warming. So can we trust this warming uh, so, uh, or not? The second question is uh, whether or not the models are reliable, okay? Because uh, uh, everything is done then using the models. So the, 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 this scenario, the future scenario, this warming scenario that we see here, are, 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 are created using these models. So we need to, re to understand whether or not the models are reliable. In this talk, I will, I will address this topic. Okay? Tomorrow, I will address this other topic. So I will try to answer the two basic questions that we, we, we have. Okay, so let us see uh, this uh, question. So let us try to answer this question. Is the 0 0.9 Celsius global surface warming since 1850, 1900 reliable or not? Okay, so first of all, of course, uh, we know that the climate has always changed, so there is no problem here, okay? So um, it's changed a lot, uh, uh, and uh, um, this is actually the climate change. This is CO2, so there is some, some contradiction between CO2 and uh, the pattern in the climate system, but uh, in any case, uh, the problem is, uh, is a little bit more complicated when we look at uh, at, uh, at the system uh, uh, in, during the last 150 years. So what do we see here? So we have uh, three records. The first record, this one, is the land, uh, land record. This is the land temperature anomaly. Uh, the blue one is the ocean temperature anomaly, and the middle one is the average between the two. It's, okay, it's a weighted way average according to the uh, percentage of land the ocean that we have. So what we can see here is that the land and the ocean uh, were more or less similar, more or less similar here. Uh, and then uh, during the last 50 years and so, there has been this divergence, okay? So we have the ocean here and the land here. So the land warmed during the last 50, 60 years. The land warmed much more than the land warmed much more than the ocean. Okay, so we have a big, big difference here. But here there is not much difference. The same thing happens if we take other records uh, of the temperature. This, the red one, is the uh, land data from Berkeley Earth. And the ocean here, the ocean temperature is from, uh, from the head SST, okay? So also here we see this divergence between the two records, quite a strong divergence. So the ocean warmed much less than the land. At the beginning it started this way and then there has been this divergence, okay? This is another record, okay, so we see always the same thing. So the land surface, the land surface warms much more than the, the uh, ocean surface. This is the GIS record, and this happened during the last 50 years, so on. Now, it's, uh, uh, so, um, of course, uh, everybody knows uh, that uh, land and ocean have a different uh, heat capacity, so it's possible that this difference uh, that we observe is due simply to the fact that there is a different heat capacity between the ocean and the land. The land has a much lower heat capacity, so uh, it will warm much faster than the ocean. So this can be the reason of this divergence. Yet, yet uh, if we compare just the land region from different uh, uh, records, so these are the best satellites, GIS, uh, the CRU, and then this is the uh, GHGN uh, record. So what we see is that uh, the satellite, so now we are looking only on the land, the satellite's measurements uh, appears to show less warming than the land, uh, than than the, uh, the land uh, uh, measurements. So the land records seem to uh, give more warming than the satellite's uh, measurements. So what is happening here? And the f so what's happening is it's a clear warming. There is this clear warming divergence, uh, also using just land temperature records measured with the satellites versus the land stations. So what is happening here?
Now, let us do an hypothesis. The hypothesis is temperature records from land station are biased upward by urban heat island effects. So let us do, uh, make this hypothesis and let us check whether or not this is uh, realistic. Now, what is the, the urban, heat, uh, urban heat island effect? So we know that the cities, for several reasons that are here uh, explained, uh, get much warmer than the rural uh, region. Okay, so there is essentially heat trapped inside the city. The city produces heat and so on. So the city warm, uh, are much warmer than the surrounding region because they generate some kind or and then he trapped some, a lot of heat. And these are uh, a kind of picture, so the cities are clearly much warmer than the surrounding, okay? So, so there is this uh, urban heat island that uh, develop around the cities. Now, these are a picture from uh, California. So here, we, there, there is a comparison between uh, uh, stations located close to the cities, so here, uh, um, uh, and other stations, this one, that are more rural re regions. And what is happening here, what is being observed here is that the stations that are relatively close to big cities and so on get much warmer than this station here where there is no warming recorded, recorded in, the, in, the, uh, in, in the records. So this is a typical picture that is shown. So this is a, a, a warming of the cities. And this is the record from the rural region. So you see that there is a, a clear warming uh, that is generated by the city. Okay, so this difference is due, due, due is the, the urban uh, heat of the cities. So, um, so what happens? So why the urban heat island effect is a problem? It's a problem because the cities are not stationary, are dynamical bodies. They have grown a lot during the last 50, 60, 60 years. So essentially what happens is the following. If a meteorological station is located in a rural or suburban area and this place is gradually urbanized in time, then this station records a warming due to the increasing urban heat that it experiences as the city grows around it. So if I have a station in one place and then the city, is, uh, the station is in a rural region, let us suppose, then there is a city that is growing around, that station will record a warming, uh, even if the climate system remains perfectly constant. Okay, so this is something that is well known. Yet, yet, it is claimed that in the climate temperature records, uh, urban, e, uh, urban heat island biases are corrected by homogenization approaches. So we have seen that the data are transformed, are treated in many ways to try to eliminate this effect and other problems. So they are cleaned, they are corrected in, very, in various ways, they are homogenized in various ways. So there is a, 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 an attempt to eliminate this problem from the record. So in the original record that I show you, that is global surface temperature record, all these operations are done, so it is supposed that that record is cleaned by urban heat island effects. So there is this claim that is made. Yet, yet homogenization is not a solution because what is done essentially is to alter or correcting, they claim correcting a record in one place by using records also in other places, all right? So they do some kind of homogenization. But, but of course, if the, the records are, 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 all these records are a little bit corrupted, so this is a little bit more corrupted, this less, this medium, and so on, if you take some kind of average, uh, at the end you don't get clean water, but you get something that is a little bit dirty. So some uh, uh, urbanization effect 
will remain inside this, this algorithm that tries to eliminate the effect. But in reality, it does not really eliminate the effect. So it just spread it around, and there is the, the risk that the, the final product still contain a little bit of dirty. Okay, so, uh, so it's not a real, a real way of doing things. Okay, so how can we handle the problem? One way to handle the problem is to separate the station from rural to urban station, but in reality, this is not really efficient because even the rural station can be influenced by urban heat island effects or something local because it's a very strong effect. So, and um, it can spread around very easily and also the, the urban area can, can be transformed in some way. So it's not really a solution. The solution comes uh, in my model from uh, the physics of the atmosphere. So this is a boundary layer structure of uh, the atmosphere above a city. And what is observed is that there is a very big difference between uh, uh, the, the atmosphere, the physics of the atmosphere above a city during the daytime, the daytime and, and during the nighttime. So practically what happens here is that the planetary boundary layer, this, uh, this uh, distance here, okay, this uh, uh, st strata of air, during the, the day is much bigger than during the night. Okay, so that means that during the day, uh, the heat is more concentrated around the city. Then during, uh, during the night, the heat gets more trapped around the city than during the day because this very high uh, planetary boundary layer uh, is a, a, a diffuse heat uh, more easily, so the heat will go away, go up, and so it will go away. Instead, if this level is very low, then the heat can be actually trapped here and can actually be moved toward the uh, suburban and, ur and uh, rural area by the wind. So the wind will, uh, there is this wind, it will warm up a little bit on the city and uh, reach uh, perhaps regions who are more, uh, more rural, and therefore it will actually warm also this region. So there is uh, some kind of effect like this. This effect of uh, this heating is bigger, this effect is bigger during the night than during the day. So we need to distinguish day and night. And let us see what happens there. So OHI is stressed more during night time than during day time. So we need to look not at the average temperature, but we need to look at the maximum and minimum temperature, because the maximum temperature is a measure of the daytime temperature, while the minimum temperature is a measure of the nighttime temperature. Okay? So we need to look not at the average record, but at the minimum and the minimum and the maximum temperature and see what happens there. This is a work that has been published a few months ago. So now I will talk about China, what happened in China. So, the, so this is the first study, then I will show you the world study, but now let us talk about, uh, show you what happens in China. Why did I use China as a, a testing region? China is a very good testing region because uh, you see here from this graph, the urban and rural population, how it changed during the last uh, 70 years, okay? So practically you see that this is the rural population, this is the urban urban population, there has been a big change in population, a lot of ur ur urbanization occurred in China during the last 70 years. So we have this, are the graph are the same, percentage of population, the urban and rural area, so you see that practically now there are more people living in, in cities than, in, than in, in, in the countryside, so practically China had a huge incredible huge uh, urbanization. So in Europe, uh, we, we had the urbanization, okay? The urbanization doubled uh, in this period, but in China it became 
10 times, 10 times more. So it's, it's something very, very big. So this is uh, the, where the population is uh, concentrated in China. This is density population, okay? So you see here from this uh, picture, you see here uh, from the color how fast uh, the, the city grow in China. Uh, you see, this is uh, Beijing. Beijing, uh, it was like this, uh, 1.7 1 million, million people. Now we have uh, tw uh, 20 million people, so something like that. So we, we had a huge amount uh, increase of the population. These are, uh, in China, it's a pretty, a pretty good uh, network. These are the network used for uh, getting the temperature record in China, so it's not too bad. Uh, okay, uh, quite. And so let us now look at the data. What happened in China uh, from 1900 to now? So, and so we have the, uh, the maximum temperature maximum temperature, so the daytime temperature. We have the minimum temperature, so the nighttime, nighttime temperature. And we have the, the mean temperature, that is what people usually look at. But as I told you, we need to, to look to this record, and we need to look to this record. So we, if we look at the minimum temperature from uh, this period, to this period, the temperature rose 1.2 Celsius degree. Okay, so there is a rise of 1.2 Celsius degree. If we look at the maximum temperature, so the daytime temperature, it increased just 0.36 Celsius. Okay, so the, we have a big difference between night, night and day. So uh, the average would be like this, but there is this huge difference. Now, what can we do with this? Uh, records, we need to compare them with the predictions from the climate models that are then used for, 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 for many things. And the models also give a minimum temperature, the average temperature, and a maximum temperature. And also in this case, the minimum temperature uh, are predicted to grow a little bit more than the maximum temperature. So we have 0 0.94 Celsius degree and 0 0.75 Celsius degree. The average is 0 0.84 Celsius degree. Now, if you compare this number with this number, it's not too far. Okay, it's more or less uh, correct. Okay, so a little bit different, but not not a big deal. So there is a very small difference in the average temperature. But if you look at the maximum and the minimum temperature, the difference is huge. This is 1.2, this is 0 0.94, so it's 25% less. And this is 0 0.75, and this is 0 0.37, so it's almost half of it. So we have the average is almost good, but the minimum and the maximum temperature are completely different. Okay, so, so we have the models are telling one thing and the data are telling a very different thing, although the average temperature is almost the same. But, we need that, but the physics is contained in the minimum and the maximum, not in the average. Okay, so that is where we should look at. This is what happened in China. This is the observation. These are the models. The models, we have the T maximum. This is the difference between two periods. This period, so 1950 and 2010. This is the difference in temperature. You, did, you see that the models give something nearly homogeneous all in China. Instead, the data are quite different, are quite different, okay? There are even situations where there has been registered cooling in China in some region between 1950 and 2010. So it's a quite, uh, the reality looks uh, quite different from the models. And this is what happened in the data. So we take the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So the minimum, the, the, the warming observed in the minimum minus the warming observed in the maximum between uh, uh, 2050, uh, 1950 and 2010. And this is what we see. We see a lot of, of uh, exceeding warming in this red region. So there is, uh, so in this region, uh, we have uh, almost uh, T minimum 1.5 degree 
above the maximum warming. Okay, so there is a, a huge difference in degree. The dots that you see here are the cities, the main cities of China. So the localization of main cities of China are these, uh, are these uh, the dots here. This picture needs to be compared with this. This is the same calculation. It's the difference between the warming of T minimum and T maximum between the same years, 1950, 2010, obtained with the models, okay? So you see that there is a, a quite big difference. So here there is a, a slightly difference between T minimum and T maximum predicted by the models, but the reality is this one, where we have this concentration. Of course, of course, okay, we can take the difference, so the bias, uh, between the temperature of between the data and the models, this is the difference between uh, practically this minus this, so we get the bias. So we get this kind of picture. So we see a lot of bias in this region here. We see a lot of bias in this region here or here. Okay, but this region are also the region with. Uh, the greatest concentration of cities, as you can see here. Also here, there's a lot of cities here. Here, there is almost nothing. Now, well, let us see what happens here and what happens here, okay? So let us see what, so these are other pictures, but are equivalent. These are the data, these are the models, data and models. I just changed the, the interval. So here is between 1960 and 2010. This is between 1970 and 2010. You see that there is the same pattern. So there is a huge concentration of, of bias here and here compared to the prediction of the models. Let us see this picture. Now I am dividing the data between the summer and uh, the, so the warm month from, uh, from May to October, and the cold month from November to April. And here we have the maximum temperature. This is the minimum temperature. This is interesting. So let us see at what happens during May to October in China on maximum temperature. You see that the temperature during the, the, the daily temperature did not change at all between this time and this time in China. Here, okay, during the winter it changed a little bit more. The mean temperature grow in this way. But this is interesting because uh, it appears that during, uh, in China, uh, during summer and during uh, the day, there is no CO2 effect here. Practically in uh, 60, 70 years, more than 70 years, there was been no warming at all. There was this cooling and warming, okay that is observed everywhere in the world, but then this maximum and this mass are practically the same. These are the prediction of the models. Again, the average is okay, but if we look at the minimum and the maximum temperature, these records, these are the predicted records, are very different from the observation. So here there is this, and here we have this warming, okay? Here there is this warming, so here we have this. So they are very different, very different. There are the bias that we observe. These are the observations, these are the models. So this is a difference. We get a huge amount of difference compared to the models. So, and these are months by months. These are the models, these are the data, huge difference. So what is happening here? So practically, the fact that there is a so big difference between the minimum and the maximum temperature, uh, in China, much more than what the models uh, predict, in my opinion, that uh, implies that, uh, uh, that uh, there is something, there is some problem there. Of course, one can claim that the models are wrong for several reasons, but if we assume that the models are correct, which is what the IPCC assumes, we need to conclude that the temperature record has a problem. And the problem might be that uh, uh, there is urban heat island that remains inside the record even after the homo homogenization of the records. And, and this picture explains well the reason. So let us look at what happened in this region that was very red in the picture that I show you. If I zoom this region, 
I get this. If I zoom this, I get this. If I zoom this, I get this. So these little dots that you see here are a lot of cities. So practically all this region, all this region that was red, very red, is filled with a lot of towns, little towns at one, two, three kilometers of distance, one from the other, that has been built in the last 50 years. So this was very rural, now it has become uh, suburban, okay? So practically we have thousands of kilometers practically filled with little, little town. So it's obvious that the entire network here is biased by some kind of urban heat island effect and there is no method to clean the temperature records from this heat. Because, of course, this warms, this warm, so also this region will warm in the middle. So, uh, so it's obvious that all region. This region here was uh, the one that has uh, practically no, no, no effect, no warming. And you see that it's extremely green. There are no cities. There is a big city here, but there are no uh, cities, uh, towns all around. There, is a, there are just houses around. There are not uh, little towns like this. No? There is just a big city here and nothing else. So everything else is, is rural, even if there are little, little houses all around. But uh, no cities, uh, not little town all around. So, so here you can easily separate uh, urban from rural, but here you cannot. So practically in China, there is a lot of urban heat island effect in the record. But that means that, uh, that, means that the original record that I show you is biased. Okay, the, the original record that I show you is, is biased, warm, because uh, uh, the urban heat island effect has not been cleaned as uh, it was claimed to be. So there was surely less warming in China. And this record here is very curious because uh, it's very curious that during summer, the hot months, T-Max in China did not grow at all in 70 years. So it's, it seems that CO2 does not work during summer and during day in China, okay? So that is the situation. There, are, there might be some other problem related to the pollution in China and so on that may have an effect, but the pollution will, affect, will reduce the, 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 the heat, so it might have an effect, equivalent effect on night and days, but not make a difference between night and days so big, uh, so big. Okay, but what is happening in the world? So the problem of China in reality exists all around the world, okay? So not just here. So let us see what happens in the world. This is our data, the same data. We have shown these things before, this area before. This is what happens in the rest of the world. These are the models, the prediction of the models. You see that there is a big difference between the models and the data. These are pictures of the data, okay? So you see here these red spots. Oh, you see this color here, this color here, this color here, here, here. You see this color here. Oh, you see something here. So you can see something interesting. There is all this region, quite red. These are regions that grow a lot hmm? on this China region. In Europe, the things are, uh, depends. Here in Germany, perhaps there is no big deal, but in the rest of Europe here, there is uh, some problem. Here in England and so. so. There is some problem here. There are big cities here, some poor, some poor. There is big problem here. In the United States, there are problems here, problems here, something here. Uh, here, there may be some other reason because uh, uh, there are some other mechanisms in place because uh, this hot spot here, there are no cities here, big cities, so there may be some other effect, but uh, urban Italy and the fact can be also caused by very small town. If they grow and there is the, the station there, so it may get some, may get some warming. So there is some, there is some dark uh, blue, blue, blue dots. You see these blue dots are due these are in the desertic region. In the des des desertic region, usually, um, the urban heat island 
the, 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 the urban effect is not a warming, but it's a cooling. Uh, it's the opposite, so there is some problem. Here there has been a lot of deforestation, a change of the albedo. So you can see a, a lot of stuff like that. So the, the, there was a cooling, but also there was a deforestation. And so you can see something, but um, the records have some bias. These are the bias that we have seen. And practically, at the world record, it's likely that there is some, uh, some part of the warming that has been registered in the data, that 0 0.9 Celsius that has been registered in the data, may be partially due to some uh, problem in the handling the data, so uh, related to urbanization and other effects, uh, that which might not be climatic, so maybe due to, to deforestation, maybe due to other effects like that. So it's not a warming induced by uh, greenhouse gases or, or something like that. So there are problems in the, in the land, in the land station, in the land station. And perhaps um, 10, 20 percent of the warming is fake, no, it's not really climatic, it's due to something else, so uh, to problems in the data. Now, let us look at uh, one place where the urban heat island effect probably does not exist, and this is Greenland. In Greenland, there are uh, 30, 40,000 people living in very small town, which are this one. So probably here there was, the population has not grown too much during the last 50 years. So in any case, the, the cities are very few and they are very uh, small. There are a few hundred people or maximum. The biggest one has uh, 15,000 people. So they are very, very small uh, uh, town. Uh, so we have just three cities above 1,000 people, so there's something extremely small. So, so we have a few hundred people for each town. So, there are, so probably in this region, very large region, there is no urban heat island effect. Uh, so what do we see here? The red, one, the red line is the climate record, the temperature of Greenland, as is recorded in Greenland. This is the... And the Blue one is the models, the, 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 the models, okay? The models that predict this warming. So from this period, from this period to this period, you see that the data are here and the models are here. So practically, this is 0 0.67, 0 0.7, and this is about 1.5. So since this period, the models have predicted the nearly double of the warming observed in Greenland. So what does this mean? What does this mean? This? It, may, it means that these models uh, are, uh, it, uh, are clearly wrong because they are overestimating greatly the warming uh, in this region. Okay, so according to the model, the CO2 has produced this warming, had to, had to produce this warming, but uh, less than half is observed. Okay, so we see this cooling that we see also in China, this cooling and then this warming. So this cooling, warming that we see all around the world and then the world. So, but the model don't have this cooling, they don't have this cooling, they go up in this way due to CO2, following the CO2 production emissions, uh, the data in this region. So practically what is happening here? Several evidence show that the temperature climatic land record are likely biased by urban heat island effects, which has not been efficiently filtered by homogenization approaches. The claim that in 20th century warming is likely overestimated by a few tenths of degree. Greenland suggests that models overestimated the warming since the 40s by a factor of two. So this means that we need to look at the temperature record that we have because there might be problems there. Too much warming has been in, inside those records, maybe a little bit less. There was a warming because we have other evidences that a global warming existed. We have, for example, the data from the ocean. The ocean has warmed, so the warming, the, the warm, uh, the warming uh, occurred. 
but probably a little bit less than what uh, uh, the records that we have have, because they were not able to filter out uh, local effects that have nothing to do with climatic effects, like the urban heat tide. And the models were calibrated to get the warming observed, but if the real warming was a little bit less, the models are misinterpreting the, the data. Uh, of course, they are over, uh, overestimating the effect of, of uh, the greenhouse gases, like CO2, the effect of CO2, and so on. And uh, so the problem is very open, okay? The, the problem is, uh, is very open, and uh, so we need to look again, even at the temperature record. We cannot fully trust that trends. I finished. <laughs> Recht herzlichen Dank. Und jetzt folgen die Fragen. Robert Lechner Schobel ist mein Name. Professor Piantelis, thank you very much for this great presentation. And the effects that you explained, the warming in urban areas, isn't the same effect applicable also for large wind parks. I remember the largest wind park in Texas, the measurement value in the ground within 10 years, 0.73 centigrade warming. Mm. And if we, a study from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology shows 10% wind energy is one centigrade warming globally. Mm -hmm. And also what I think Germany, wind farms up to 100 kilometers a distance from the coast this does not create a, a huge amount of warming. And uh, is it the right way what the Panic Institute for Climate Research says? More windmills to fight against this warming? Yeah, no, I don't know now the details that you're talking about, but uh, of course every source of heating in the, in the surface will be considered urban heat island effect. So there will be the same effect, more or less. Of course, the cities are very big objects. So they, there the effect will be more relevant. So it's important also to know where the, the, uh, the station, the meteorological station is located. Because of course, it uh, depends on uh, the, uh, so we have those data. And uh, so it's very important to determine where those station is. But uh, the warm is not just, the warm is not just local. Uh, so I saw you that the wind is able to move warm, the, the warm air from one region. So if this is the city and this is a countryside, I cannot say that here there is no urban heat island effect because the, the, the wind take the warm air from here and a little bit it moves here. So a little bit of warming is spread around. And, uh, um, and that is not a climatic warming. It's a, it's a, 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 a warming. It's a warming. It's because uh, the temperature measures a warming. But it's not due to, to, to greenhouse gases. It has a different origin. The models don't have this uh, mechanism. And therefore, uh, the, they try to interpret the warming due to just the greenhouse gases. And uh, that is misleading because they end up by overestimating the warming. That is uh, the problem. And uh, we get a lot of evidence of this overestimation. And tomorrow I will talk more about that. So uh, there are huge evidence that uh, uh, the anthropogenic global warming due to the emissions is, uh, uh, is overestimated. Then there are other warming sources, but uh, it's not climatic, it's due to other effects. Hello. One question here. Javier Corripio from Meteo Exploration here. Ah. Um, thank you for highlighting a very important process that I think has been neglected in the evaluation of temperature. And I have uh, a couple... Excuse me, I am not able... Okay, repeat the... Yeah, thank you for highlighting an important process that I think has been neglected in the evaluation of temperature. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the boundary layer at night, and, but sometimes, well, most of the times, minimum temperature is constrained by dew point temperature, 
which is related to moist content, to humidity. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of processes in cities that inject moist into mm -hmm. the, the atmosphere. So how important you think that may be? And then the second question, do you have an idea of the bias introduced by the homogenization? You took a, a few tenths of a degree mm -hmm. for the total thing, mm -hmm. but the, the homogenization itself, how much it could be? Because good Sojourn talks about maybe half of the total warming. Well, uh, I don't have a, 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 a quantification of the effect that Totally, but it's not easy to quantify. I cannot say, say that there is a bias, because then to quantify the effect, we need to really look to regions where there is no urbanitarian effect. It must be a very big region. So I show you the example of Greenland, but uh, we need still to look uh, at other regions. So that's just an example. If we uh, suppose that Greenland is a, a good testing region, uh, we have that, uh, uh, and we uh, suppose the models uh, are correct because the model they try to interpret the warming, right? So we got that the models uh, double the warming observed in Greenland, and therefore uh, it is possible that uh, this uh, urban Italian effect might be even uh, have contributed to the double. So on the, the, maybe half of the warming could be. Related, to it. but I don't feel that as uh, so simple because there are region, blue region, so there is uh, more. Uh, uh, to, um, I need to work more on those data to quantify exactly. But surely there is a problem because uh, in many regions of the world there is a very large uh, 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 this warming that appears to be partially 20, 30 percent due to uh, to urbanization effect that. Uh, has not been cleaned, because if it were cleaned, we could not see this big difference between minimum and maximum temperature, because both temperatures are cleaned, but still the effect uh, is still there. So I think that um, is, is an open problem. It's not solved. I did not solve it, just show that there is a problem, and that, that problem needs to be addressed. And then that problem fits with many other research claiming that the uh, um, emissions, human emissions, the effect, climatic effect of human emissions is overestimated because the models are giving too much warming. And so they are not getting the data. They are not getting that cooling from the 40s to the 70s. And that is a big problem for these models. So, and then many other things. So uh, it's an open problem. But just uh, I show you that there is a problem that needs to be addressed because um, what, I have, what I've done is not. Uh, uh, perfect, let us say. And for, for the other questions, uh, yes, there are many effects that the city do, including inclu adding a lot of uh, water vapor. And in particular, I think in the, the, the desertic region, there is a lot of water vapor, and that may have the cooling effect instead of warming effect compared to the desertic region that is surrounding the, the, the situation. So the water will keep a little bit uh, cooler system. So there is, uh, uh, of course, many things that need to be understood uh, well. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, this is research uh, in, that is going on. Okay? Uh, Professor Scafetta, yes. I have a question concerning the reliability of the measurements especially in the first half of the 20th century, yeah. because I doubt that in Central Asia there, were, there was a grid of, uh, t of stations mm -hmm. that gives us reliable temperatures, same over oceans. Yes. We know that in the, former, in the old days there have been weather ships mm -hmm. who made observations, but they were so rare that nobody can tell me that they have reliable temperature measurements, yeah. first. Second, uh, average temperatures, in my opinion, is not a very valuable uh, method because I have been in northern China, in Beijing, for a couple of times, and in winter it was bitterly cold with temperatures of below minus 20, and in summer it was 
over 40 sometimes, mm -hmm. Celsius, and, uh, and with a humidity of 90%. So, uh, if you make an average temperature, let's say like 10%, in my opinion, there's no value, valuable um, statement of this. Yeah, yeah. So that is uh, uh, about the first questions, the reliability of the records before 1950. I agree that there are problems because there are few stations, but in my analysis, I started from 1950 to today. So I, did not, I am not using the data before 1950. So I am using the data from uh, after the war, so 1950 and so on. So um, in any case, I am assuming what they assume. So uh, the, uh, the center that uh, provided the global surface temperature, that is what is used, they claim those data are sufficiently reliable. So you're not questioning what they do. Say so if they say that those data are, 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 is what we have, and that is the reconstruction that we have, uh, so I start with that uh, hypothesis. Okay, I start believing them. Then, of course, there are many other problems on this, but uh, uh, I assume they are right, they are good, they did their best for getting the data, but still, those data have problems, and therefore needs to be addressed. During the last, I have problems during the last 50, 60 years when the cities grow so much all around the world, in particular in, the, in this, uh, in this country, not in Europe, but in, in, in the other country of the world, they grow so much. And uh, so, um, and, then, and those problems suggest that there is still some local warming, like urban Italy, and the fact that is, uh, that remain those data. So those data they provide do not really uh, tell us uh, the climate change. They are telling us uh, uh, something that is a mixing between climate change and the local warming that has not been cleaned, uh, cleaned out. And therefore, uh, it's a problem that needs to be still uh, investigated and, 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 and solved. And solved. Uh, so this is uh, my answer to, I don't know if I sufficiently answer your question, but uh, I, I agree with you that uh, there are other problems due to the distribution, geographical distribution of the data and so on, but um, that would be a different issue that is, uh, than, this, than this one. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much.